I'm probably the only Indian engineer in the Bay Area who does not know how to program or use a computer beyond uh, using it for my uh, daily needs. So that's my extent of technology. I certainly do use the internet to a great degree. I have a blog that I update and keep with respect to my professional thoughts and am part of a variety of communities. My personal experience has been with respect to technology. Um, communities, I was introduced to the internet through Pine in 1995 uh, in New Delhi. So that was the first time when it was literally exposure to the World Wide Web which at that point in 95 on online communities was just by virtue of requiring online access, being literate enough to surf. Uh, AOL, AOL hadn't really, you know, put it in every home you could speak. Um, it was a community that was literate, was thinking, was aware of the world. And I became part of a community where the most powerful statement to me was I saw the future as of the World Wide Web, which I prefer than the Internet, as bringing down the barriers. I was talking to people in England. I've just gone and spent a week with a friend, Emma, that I met through this very same community 10 years ago, and we met in person. A generation or two ago, she would have been a pen pal. Now it's through Skype or email that we've stayed in touch uh, over the last 10 years, but these are still valid relationships. Is It's bringing down the barriers of social, cultural, geographic, any kind of expectation management, let's call it. When you're communicating and sharing your idea, it doesn't matter how you speak, it doesn't matter how you look, it doesn't matter where you come from, it is X, the identity, putting forth an opinion, either being picked up as a conversation by somebody else who understands and takes it further, or it is um, a community being built. No, I'm sorry, just that okay. at that point, uh, uh, you, what are they saying? The neurons or the synapses stopped firing? Um, so that, for me, was the most powerful thing. This was uh, 10 years ago. I've, what I've seen since then has been the maturing of this. I mean, in some ways, it has now taken on more or less a derived characteristics of human community. You know, they are the kids with their stuff that they are doing. It's um, the issues now of safety for children online or whatever. So it's now mapping on with the changes of naturally of the platform, but mapping on human social interaction on this. So that's the maturing of the Internet. Um, I don't know if that answers your question. It does. You, you say it's maturing. Where, where is it going to mature from here? This is, again, if I may use IMHO <laughs> shorthand, we are now taking so much of our conversation back and forth. You know, uh, One of my favorite sayings of late has been, uh, in the pre, in, in, in 15 to 20 years ago, a business model or a brand, let's say. A brand was a success when it became a noun. Even up until 15, 20 years ago, you have your Kleenex, you have Xerox, you have Aspirin. Today, a brand is becoming a success, a brand on this platform. I don't know of a larger word than the internet or the World Wide Web, but I believe it is because it's not just that. Let's call it online or let's call it the virtual community because we've got broadband coming in, we've got being connected from phones. So there's a lot more than just a web and that single screen. If we look at it as a virtual or non-tangible area in which to do business in its own right, then those brands are becoming verbs. I Google, I Skype, and this is even better for the Apple brand. It's not just 
iPod, it's become a nickname for an entire medium of broadcast. So iPodcast. That's one of the biggest changes that I've seen, that they've gone from becoming household nouns to becoming verbs, the successful brands. I mean, I see other patterns. I'm working on a case study of these three particular brands. So there are other patterns that I'm seeing, but uh, I don't think this is the right uh, arena to get into pontificating on <laughs> that. Uh, Tell me why you're, at, why you're at the conference. What did you come here to, to learn? Um, to wholly answer that question, I would like to take a thought that in one sense finishes the thought of your previous question because that's sort of like a linkage to this. So as I've just said about these brands, what I also believe is that the business models that were being used up until now for all the industries or organizations that were developed online, the tech boom, are derivations of traditional business models taught to us in business school, in say strategy class. Uh, just yesterday, and here's my answer, here's why I'm here. Just yesterday, Mr. Gilder of the Gilder Technology Report brought up the fact that content and conduit by virtue of information science should not be combined, meaning content and conduit should not be integrated, which is where which was the approach a Verizon, a Verizon or a Cisco were taking as per his statement. He said that by virtue of the power of that technology, I still don't have the words for this, uh, con the conduit and the content should be separated for better performance. And this he based on information science. Now if I were to translate it into business model, MBA speak, I would say earlier a preferred business model for an industry was say vertical integration versus horizontal expansion so that they focused on their core competency and then integrated vertically into production or tire rubber manufacturing then cars which is the model that he is saying the integration of conduit and content which doesn't work for this platform. So what in effect is happening is that we've hit a wall on deriving business models based on those for a different platform. I'm hesitating in trying to find words is because I'm here to hear others and try to find the words to articulate this concept. Um, but there is an example that I can now perhaps research, or rather say I can Google, to find more information to support this hypothesis, that I think we've hit a wall with business models. I think we need to look at the full depth. We've only been looking it at linear. What's the latest, greatest technology? But what's also been happening is that each technology has been maturing and depth is happening. So for a successful so now we need to look at it in depth to see its power and develop business models that support that power. Does that make sense? Makes sense. So since that's my current obsession, that's why I'm here. <laughs> what haven't we talked about that's important? As far as I'm concerned, nothing. That's fine. <laughs> I mean, Maybe once I've kind of got this, got off this, I'm trying to develop, I, whether I'll succeed or not, I'm trying to develop frameworks and methods to leverage what I think is this post-industrial platform. It's become a mature, Web 2.0, I mean, it's become an industry in its own right. And I, I'm analyzing, I'm looking at these three case studies, Google, Skype, and iPod, because one is a handheld. One is a website and one is a software application. And they are all successful brands with a loyal community following. And they're harnessing the future power of current technology. Yes? So maybe we can find answers there to find a model.
Where's the odd, uh, applause? I don't hear it. <laughs> Thank you. Great. You've been perfect.